Okay, I've started the recording. Uh, before we start uh, and get on to the main techniques, what I would like to uh, present to you all is what is Nadi Astrology. If some of you want me to uh, go slow, we would go slow. Yes, Marin, the re recording is on. In India, whenever we start any major Vidya, we always pray to Lord Ganesha. Some of you might not be following the Indian uh, Hindu system, Hindu religion, which is fine. But if you are wearing shoes, if you can just remove your shoes as a mark of respect, let us all pray to Lord Ganesha to help us in our study of Bhigu astrology. Let us pray to the great Maharishi Bhigu for him to bless us in understanding the subtle secrets of Bhigu astrology. Let us pray to Goddess Saraswati. She is the Goddess of learning to help us in grasping this knowledge of Jyotish and Bhrigu astrology. Let us pray to all the Gurus of this lifetime and previous lifetimes in blessing us in grasping this knowledge that they are going to learn in the next 16 weeks. Finally, let us pray to all the Navgrahas and thank them for teaching us the subtle secrets of astrology. I thank everybody present here today for coming and joining this course. Thank you. Now let us try to understand what is Nadi astrology. It is very difficult to explain Nadi astrology in five minutes, but I will try to explain it. I hope everybody can understand my accent. If somebody can't, then I'll try to be more slow. I'll now show you some slides. What is Nadi Astrology? I have now shared my screen. Nadi Astrology is basically a form of Hindu Astrology. It has been mainly practiced in Tamil Nadu, that is a state in uh, India. Some form of it, very minor, was practiced in Kerala especially uh, the border regions of Kerala. But it is mainly, it flourished in Tamil Nadu. It is obviously like our astrology, the past, present and the future. Especially it went deeper into the previous lifetimes of a native. Let us try to understand the various broad types of Nadi astrology. One, you have those kind of texts where the ancient sages have given only predictions. Today people in astrology know about this form where you go, show your thumbprint and the reader, the Nadi reader will go and remove your leaf. After verifying some events, he will start giving you predictions. In these kind of Nadi leaves, only predictions are given. The logic is not given. Then you have the second type of Nadi astrology, where 
you see that the Rishi is giving prediction but once in a while he will offhand give some technique. It is from these techniques which are often not explained in detail. Many astrologers have tried removing out the techniques. Then you have other forms of Nadi astrology, other texts written by several rishis and some ancient writers where there is a good mix of prediction or some of those texts like for example Sukar Nadi, S-U-K-A-R, they have given good ample techniques. You have many other Nadis like this. Chandrakala Nadi, Brigunandi Nadi, Lagna Nadi, Buddha Nadi, Guru Nadi, Amsha Nadi. So you have many other Nadis like this. This is not an exhaustive list. <clears throat> Let us come to what is Brigu astrology. Brigu Rishi wrote several books, several works and in some of the works there were clear cut only predictions. They are popularly known in India as Brigu Samhita, especially in the north it is called Samhita. He also wrote a Nadi called Brigu Nadi. We had released it in our manuscript section around five years back, six years back, this Brigu Nadi. It contained majorly Nadi Amsa. Nadi Amsa are very minute divisions. Similarly, like Brigu Nadi, you find Guru Nadi also and you find Chandrakala Nadi also which are based on Nadi Amsa. But in these texts, you only find predictions. Each Nadi Amsa is a division, we need not go into it. But finally, if you study it minutely, every 24 seconds, which can further be divided into 12 seconds, the prediction changes. That means if your planet, a particular planet, say 7th Lord, is on one side of 24 seconds, you might have one marriage. If it is on other side, you might have two marriages. So it is very minute and this is the real astrology. But we must understand that the basis of this Nadi Amshas has not been revealed to us. What is the logic? What is the basis? Then we must understand that a Rishi like Brigu Rishi would not have written only one book called Brigu Samhita. He must have many systems within himself. For example, in Brihat Parashara Hora Shastra, you also find some portions of Gemini astrology. Of course, there is a debate whether Parashar Rishi wrote that or it is an interpolation. But like you as a person today, you are studying Parashari Astrology, Prashna, Gemini, Varshafal systems. Similarly, our Rishis would be knowing much more. So we cannot limit that Bhrigu Rishi wrote only one part of the system. He had several systems. Out of this, a particular system where people found it working quite effectively, they called it the Brigu system of astrology. We will be studying this system 
incidentally there is no particular book on Brigu astrology especially what we will be teaching in this course there is no particular book we have to understand that astrology has been primarily an oral tradition so this Brigu system was passed on from generations to generations it started getting hidden the practitioners of Brigu astrology came to be known as Brigus plural of Brigu they came to be known as Brigus they formed a separate clan, a secret clan they would not pass on this knowledge to anybody, everybody over a period of time it became extremely obscure especially the problem with Nadi astrology that all of us should understand before we proceed further is Nadi astrology is known for its snapshot predictions but like any fast food system you find that sometimes you can predict in one second in two seconds and your prediction comes extremely accurate and sometimes you fail miserably obviously there are some riders exception rules which over a period of time the gurus did not pass on to the students we will be facing the same problem this should be kept in the back of the mind like any form of astrology this form of astrology also has exception rules and most of those exception rules are not known to us in fact what is known to us today we are extremely grateful that at least so much has come out it is left to the intelligent and hard working research oriented students among you to find out the exception rules on charts where it is not working smoothly <clears throat> let us see the broad spectrum of let us see the broad spectrum of what we will be covering in this course we will be covering mainly timing of events to understand timing of events what is essential is to have a great grasp of yogas one second a good hand on basic fundamentals of astrology seventh lord in the twelfth house doesn't mean every time it will be bad seventh lord in the twelfth house will not show only one event it will show multiple events this is expected that the astrologer should know beforehand before he tries to understand timing of events which event will happen obviously there are various rules in astrology to see out of 10 options of 7th lord in 12th house which event can happen plus obviously you got to use your intuition when you are using Brigu astrology it doesn't mean 
that you cannot use any other system. It also does not mean that it is going to contradict with Parashari astrology. Each system has few different points, but you can easily integrate it. Luckily, as compared to Brigu Nandi Nadi system, where the combinations are different, the aspects are different, how you see the conjunctions are different. This system of Brigu astrology that we are going to learn does not have those contradictory rules as compared it to Brigu Nandi Nadi. What we are going to learn are few basic yogas, especially we are going to learn year based techniques, means which planet gets activated in which year. Then we will learn some planet based signification techniques. These are those significations which are not commonly known to practitioners of Parashari astrology. I will come to the essentials in the next slide. In the meanwhile, is the background, is there a background noise that is disturbing you all? I think uh, Jerlind wrote about the background noise. Yes, a little bit. Okay, if you all could hold on for a second. Now there are some essentials, there are some essentials uh, that we need to learn. When does techniques don't work? This is very very important. It is called Yoga Bhanga. Yoga Bhanga in English is when a combination, when a yoga is getting cancelled. There are two things in this. We normally try to think that a yoga is a conjunction in a horoscope. This is a misnomer. A single planet sitting in a house itself is a yoga. Then there are dashas, there is gocha, that means transit. That also can get, the results of it can get cancelled. That will again be called a yoga bhanga. That means if a dasha was supposed to give a result and it is not giving that result, that means some yoga bhanga has happened. If a gochar is supposed to give some result and it is not giving that result, that means a yoga bhanga has happened. Now there are many general rules of yoga bhanga. Second is there are specific rules of yoga bhanga. Incidentally in astrology we find that this area of yoga bhanga is the least worked upon area. 
astrologers have not written much modern astrologers have done nothing regarding it the ancient writers they have written about it but we are ignoring it conveniently because they have given combinations in books like jatak varanam and many other classics but since we do not want to wrote memorize them we ignore it but that is the real astrology one simple rule i will indicate to everybody first house is our life our complete life eighth house is death if the eighth house gets activated very strongly then our whole horoscope fails that means our first house gets completely destroyed we cease to exist which means in effect the planet sitting in the eighth house or the eighth house on its own is causing yog bhanga on the first house so we get a very simple rule take any house of your horoscope any planet sitting in the eighth from it will control it if fourth house you observe in your horoscope planet sitting in the 11th house will control or finish the fourth house matters if there is a planet in the fifth house then eighth from fifth house will be the 12th house so planet sitting in the 12th house will control or end or cause yog bhanga of the fifth house now the measure we have to understand either the planet in the 12th house will cause little yog bhanga or major yog bhanga or medium yog bhanga and it will vary from time to time if in transit the 12th house gets activated very strongly then there would be a major yog bhanga for the 5th house matters there is another simple method that we can understand 6 8 12 these are called trika houses in astrology 6 causes diseases six causes obstacles it is the natural badak house badak means obstacles eight causes end eight causes chronic diseases eight causes downfall 12th causes death or exit it causes losses or it puts you on the bed that means 6 8 12 will always control from any house so if you take fourth house the sixth house of it will be the ninth house the eighth house of it will be the 11th house the 12th house of it will be the third house 6 8 12 will have a major stake third house from any house will have 60 to 80% of the stake in controlling the house because that is the house of purusharth it is the house of free will it is the house of effort that means by some good efforts you can change the first house let us go further
another method by which yog bhanga happens this is called ved this is not the vedas of our hindus the holy book of our hindus this ved you find mentioned in lot of books on especially the chapters on transits that means a particular planet influences some other planet in transit so far till date astrologers have used it only in transit but you can use this also in natal chart that means one planet can have ved on another planet in your natal chart our rishi sage narad has written very clearly in fact there is a sanskrit shloka that is available today by sage narad where he is saying very clearly that an astrologer who predicts without considering ved will not be successful and he will be a useless astrologer incidentally 90 to 95% of astrologers although they have studied ved today but they do not use that while predicting and that is the reason many a times we fail in our analysis of transits so these are some rules there is another very important rule the totality of it is not known to us many a times there is a system by the way by which we can calculate when a chart has awakened to its full potential that is a method it is called bhagyoday in astrology i repeat bhagyoday that means when prosperity will rise this is just one part of finding out when a chart has awakened to its true potential sometimes a chart has awakened then again it goes to sleep or it is resting or it is walking slowly so the awakening of the chart is like a graph calculation of this there is a complete different system of calculating this unfortunately a full fledged method 100% working method is not known to any of us which includes me also i have not been able to decode this the only thing i have been able to decode is few methods by which we can calculate when bhagyoday will happen now i will just give a small example which is suppose you see that an event is being caused by surya sun at the age of 6 in one bhrigu sutra if i remember if my memory serves me right it is written if sun is in the 8th house 
in the sixth year of the native he will have fever or there may be death in the family but suppose the child has not awakened totally suppose there are some transits which are blocking the sun's rays to be powerful enough to give effect then even though there is yoga in the chart there will be yoga bhanga and the event will not happen so this you have to keep in mind now very very simple as i will repeat the best way to understand yog bhanga is to always concentrate on any house and see from which house it is 6 8 12 and from that house which planets are placed in 6 8 12 this is a broad thing i will not go in depth now later we will take this more in depth let us start with our first technique for today any questions so far yuvraj are you online do i see any questions in the question panel Helen Patterson is saying, uh, when you introduce an important term, could yeah. you type the Sanskrit word, please? Noted, Helen. I have noted your point. Let us take our first technique for today. can everybody see the screen not yet sorry not yet okay see now we can okay see it is very important to understand we need to have a little shift in our mindset regarding timing of events so far we like to think only vimshotri dasha or any dasha and transits are the system by which we can time but if you read clearly our classics our classics give many hints many shlokas by which they say so and so event will happen in so and so year right now what you see on the slide i will not go in depth on this the whole point of this slide which will be presented to everybody it will be emailed to everybody is to understand that our rashi chart in itself our natal chart without divisional charts without dasha without gochar our natal chart in itself presents many systems of timing events this is a great shift in our learning the more we accept this 
the more we will be able to accept new techniques. We have spent a long time trying to decipher such kind of techniques wherein we do not require dasha, we do not require transits and every week we will learn one technique or sometimes two techniques. Before we start the technique, very very important point is to understand that most of us have not understood how Indians calculate their age. We require to learn this because when you read classics and they say in your 30th year, 3-0, in your 30th year there would be some form of separation in your life from your loved one so you need to understand that when an Indian is writing 30th year it means he has completed 29th year 2-9 and he is in his 30th year that means 29th year plus 3 months have passed still the Indian will say he is 30 for example let us take the calculation when a child is born you can see the screen from 0 months to 12 months of age it is the first year in the Indian system of calculation that means when you ask an Indian what is the age of his child even if the child would be 6 months old he will say he is in his first year in his first year I repeat in his first year. Americans do not calculate it this way. I do not know about other countries. When an Indian child has completed 12 months of age, he will celebrate his first birthday. Immediately the next day onwards, his second year has started. That means a child is 18 months old also, it will be his second year. The child is 15 months old also, it will be his second year. This is the way we have to calculate. Let us take another example. We will have to spend quite some time on this because it takes quite a lot of time to grasp this. And it is so essential since all classical books refer to this system only. This is the Indian system. It is also the Nadi system of calculation. Let us calculate now. If a person is born on 25th May 1985, you subtract the current year from the year of birth. Now it is 2015 or as some call it 2015. You deduct from 2015, 1985, it will be 95, 2005, 2015. You can calculate on your fingertips, it will be 30 years. Thus the native is currently running his 30th year. Remember right now it is February, March, sorry. So it is actually 29 years and 8 to 9 months he has completed. Still 
we will call that the native is in his 30th year. This is very important to understand that the native is in his 30th year. But suppose, imagine that right now it is September month of 2015. So the calculations will change little bit. Because in March, sorry, in May, he was born. So May 2015, he will complete 30 years as per the Indian system. And if you are calculating his birth age in September 2015, then it will be that he is in his 31st year of age. This is extremely essential. Take five minutes right now. I want everybody to calculate their current age and if they can practice it on their near and dear ones. Then I will call three to four people on screen, on camera and ask them to demonstrate how they have calculated. I want everybody to calculate it right now. All this material Mr. Bhushan will be emailed to everybody. It will be uploaded also in the Facebook group. All this material, all the PowerPoint slides will be uploaded. Please practice it right now on at least three charts of three near and dear ones. We will, Werner will be emailing it also.
tell everybody. Let us concentrate now on calculation of the year. Let us invite a few people. Yuvraj, can you invite a few people? You can invite one. We have invited Marin Mavra. Hello Marin, how are you? Hello. I'm very fine. Can you hear me? Yeah, hi. Yes. Uh, Marin, can you show us an example of how you calculated the age for a particular person? Yeah, I have calculated for myself. I am born on the uh, 9th of October 1970, 1971. Okay. So, I am now running my 44, 44th year. So, it will be said that I am 44 years old, right? Correct. Yuvraj, can you come online also? With what, sorry? Uh -huh. Okay. Okay. Yuraj, you can take over for this session now. He is born October 1971. Am I right, Marin? Yes. So what should be his age, Yuraj? It should be 44. 44th year running. 44th year running. Marin, suppose somebody is born October 1975. Okay. So what should be his current age? 40. Correct. Very nice, Marin. I hope it is, it is not so difficult. It is easy to calculate this. Am I right? Yes, yes it is. You just have to pay attention to the date. Okay. Thank you so much, Mary. Can we invite somebody else? No, you, Raj? Yes, sure. Sure. Ray Chong. Hi Ray, how are you? Oh, sorry. Hello, Ray, can you hear? Okay, okay, I can understand. Family is sleeping. Uh, okay, can you can you invite uh, somebody else? Uh, you watch his family is sleeping. Hi, Werner. Werner, can you hear us? Yes. Okay, hi. Yeah, we can hear you. Yes, we can hear you, but we can't see you. Yeah, this is because my webcam is uh, darkened. Okay, no problem, Werner. It is not open now. 
I have to use another uh, laptop the next time. Okay, no problem. Uh, can, sure, no problem. Can, can you be a bit loud, Werner? Yeah, I can. I can cry a little bit. <laughs> okay. I <I'll> try it. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm born in July 1956. Okay. And. Uh, if we calculate from 2015 uh, and subtract uh, 1956, we will get the 59th year, and we have not to add a one because it's in July and now we have March. Perfect, perfect one. Very nice, perfect. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much, one. Can we have one more person? Yes. Helen Patterson. No. Hi, Helen. How are you? I'm good. Can you hear me? Yes. Loud and clear. I, Loud and clear. I do not have my webcam on. No, no problem, Helen. Can, can you show us an example of calculation, Helen? Um, yes, I think it's straightforward. Um, my birthday is November the 12th, 1947. Okay. And I would be considered in my 68th year. Correct. Perfect. 68th year. Perfect, Helen. So nice to hear your voice, Helen. And yours, Sunil. Thank you. Thank you so much. I hope, uh, I think everybody, uh, Everybody has grasped this, so let us now proceed further on to the techniques. Let us come to the main part. This is going to be a major portion of your syllabus for 16 weeks. These techniques are called BSP, which means the full form is Brigu Saral Paddati. I repeat Brigu Saral Paddati. Brigu is obviously Sage Brigu. Saral is a Hindi word it means in English easy. Paddati means a system or methodology. In short, you can call this BSPs. In BSPs, there are two types as I mentioned earlier. One is year based. Second part to it is planet based significations. Year based systems or obviously planet year based systems when a planet gets activated. This depends on its position and it also has some parts like aspects. For example, in Parashari Astrology, we all know Saturn has 3rd, 7th and 10th aspect. Imagine you are Saturn and 3rd is to your right, 7th is to your front and 10th is to your left at 45 degree angle. If you have to move your head from this side to center to the left, you are traveling a distance. All three angles you will not be looking at the same time. You are like a planet. A planet is like you. So your effect will be on all these three different positions at different time of a person's life. 
that means saturn's third aspect could be at a particular year of your life more stronger saturn's seventh aspect could be at a different year more stronger saturn's tenth aspect could be at an absolutely different year more stronger that means when its full capacity of third aspect is there that particular year we need to find this concept has not been revealed at all so far this concept is there only in brigu astrology we will come to those techniques when saturn will give its third aspect more powerfully when it will give its tenth aspect more powerfully similarly other planets different aspects mars 478 different years jupiter 579 different years all those we will cover in the future today we will learn a very simple method because we are starting the course we will go and start with jupiter this is our first technique i hope everybody can see the screen let us call this bsp1 brigu saral paddhati 1 the technique is simple wherever jupiter is sitting in your horoscope it will implement its energy in the 24th year or it will implement in the 12th from its position in the 24th year mainly it will implement its energies in the 12th from its natal position this is a very simple technique you can by heart it road memorizes jupiter wherever it is sitting it will implements its energy in the 12th from its natal position in the 24th year let us take an example chart to illustrate this the first example is of a native born 6th of april 1982 mesh lagna jupiter is sitting in the 7th house but before we do that we have to calculate the 24th year from what period to what period it will be i would like everybody to do that right now very simple method how i do it april 1982 so i count on my fingertip 92 2002 plus 4 2006 april so the 24th year will be from 2000 april 2005 to april 2006 let us see where jupiter is placed jupiter is placed in the 7th house 12th from it is the 6th house of diseases incidentally 6th house has mars the lagna lord of body and the 8th lord of chronic diseases note its power it is retrograde it's powerful it also this 6th house where jupiter is implementing its 12th energy it also has saturn which is lord of 11th house a badak house for mesh lagna sitting in the natural 6th house of bada natural 
sixth house of diseases now the next step what you will see the house lord the house lord of virgo has gone to the 12th house of hospitalization of which jupiter is also the lord so that is another linkage you are getting remember astrology is a science of piecing together all the clues the best astrologer is one who can catch all the clues and not get distracted by the diverse clues and predict then you also have jupiter as the ninth lord of father sixth lord mercury is also conjunct sun natural karak of father so now you got two clues one is something to do with diseases will happen second you see something to do with father will happen because twice you got father so in the story diseases and father should come into play what happened the native suffered from jaundice in the 24th year now we also know jupiter is also karaka of jaundice so the story gets more completed the father himself was a doctor and he helped overcome this jaundice quickly this is how things have happened in the native's life for the first example we will take three examples and then i will wait for questions after that we will take few more example charts that i have prepared let us see the next chart it is 9th february 1948 calculate the 24th year now everybody should mentally calculate learn to mentally calculate let us see what the 24th year is it will be february 1971 to february 1972 note the position of jupiter it is in the third house so you see the 12th house from it as i said majorly you see the 12th house it is the second house in this case second house is the house of wealth and livelihood jupiter is the lord of fourth that is stability in one's life and it is also the lord of seventh pad prapti is called in hindi that means gain of position second house is the house of you see the sign over there libra which is again a sign of gain of position its lord venus it goes to exalted position in the seventh house and you get another linkage jupiter is aspecting this venus i'm showing it by diagram so you get another linkage 
that Jupiter, who is the fourth lord and the seventh lord, is linking with the second lord of income or Artha Trikon and who is also exalted. Let us go to the next point. The native finished medical education with flying colors and he got an opportunity in a government organization, medical organization. He joined there full time and he continued till his retirement. What does it mean? It means the 24th year gave him stability for the rest of his life. It has further marked itself as a very significant year of his life. How could we detect it? That Jupiter, which is fourth lord, seventh lord, it implemented its energy in the twelfth from itself in the second house of Artha Trikon, income, profession. Let us take another example chart. 22nd October 1947. Let us calculate the 24th year. Let us see where Jupiter is placed. Jupiter sits in the third, in the fourth house. <clears throat> so it will implement its 24th year energy in the third house. Now, third house is the house of travels. It is the house of change of residence. It is having sun over there. Sun is the Lagna Lord. That means something, whenever Lagna Lord comes into play, something significant could happen. Venus is the tenth Lord also and also the third Lord. That means some form of traveling or career can come. Mercury who is placed over there, you will see Mercury is the second lord of income and also the eleventh lord of income. Remember, I am also drawing in both South Indian and North Indian charts. <clears throat> what happened? Jupiter is sitting in the fourth house. So we got the clue that something to do with education will happen. It is implementing its energy in the twelfth from itself where the tenth lord is there. Sun is there. Sun shows something to do with government. You have the tenth lord so something to do with career. You have the third lord, third house being activated. So there has to be some travel, some shift of residence. Why? Because it is twelfth from fourth house. So he got posted away from far from his native home. This is how we have seen three example charts. Before we go on to the next example chart, let us see if we have any questions. Any questions so far? No, I can't see one. 
Okay. Let us try to focus on the chart. What I would like to do now. Uh, Jen Riddle, we will come to that later. Let us finish this technique. It does activate, but slowly and steadily we will go because I want to cover a lot of portion. You all will be given a lot of homework also. So one technique, each and every technique I want everybody to master. We will do only one technique today from coming sessions. We will try to do multiple techniques as people progress. The more faster people are able to grasp and predict, we can do it. Let us see from the audience. This I will invite somebody to try and predict for this chart. Yuvraj, could you invite somebody? Let us see what happened in the 24th year. That would be... We have Bettina with us. Bettina, would you like to take this ahead? Well, I'm looking at the chart. Um, that would be the ninth house where Sun and Mercury is. Mm -hmm. um, now the slide is gone. It is okay. Can you see the slide? Yes, I can see the slide. Sun and Mercury in the ninth house. Well. I don't know. Uh, make a wild shot. Make a wild guess. Not necessary. We should come right. Make a wild guess. Um, maybe the person um, received higher teachings. Okay. Maybe through the father. Okay. W what other options can we get? What other option? It's with Mercury. Um, something to do with teachings. Okay. Maybe he became a teacher in this. Okay. Can can we all into a teaching profession? Nine thousand ten. Nine thousand the tenth uh, house involved. Okay. Do I need to pay attention to um, to Saturn, which is the ruler of the the ninth, sitting in the eight, in the sixth house? Very good point. 
well he's in a upachaya okay um but it is in scorpio it's in scorpio yes transformation exactly so his teachings got transformed uh <clears throat> this is a female chart uh can we have uh can yuvraj could you invite one more person who would like to contribute warner yes please warner or jerland jerland please forgive me if i do not pronounce uh, each one's name properly can you hear me yes hello hi hi jerland okay Okay, I think uh, perhaps uh, he uh, uh, breaked up the the education for marriage eventual. He disrupt. Uh, he cancelled the education uh, for marriage because Jupiter is also the Badak Lord, and uh, the ninth house uh, sits the Lord in the sixth. So something can. Uh, and jupiter the seventh lord is um, activated perhaps in the ninth it's also um, for child or for marriage more for marriage and perhaps something um uh, break uh, break up his education for something for marriage i think good point very good point jolin very good point okay let us see jupiter is in the 10th house 12th from it is the 9th house 9th house of father 9th house of education etc but we see over there sun is placed so we get more of father we also see mercury is placed mercury is no doubt the lagna lord it is the fourth lord fourth lord of education this mercury is retrograde that means retrovision is going reverse it is going reverse the native is a female native she was living in uk studying over there her parents asked her to come back for good so jerland you're somewhere very 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 close that she was studying and she had to shift back to india because of her father's insistence betina had made one point do we need to look at ninth lord going to the sixth house sixth house is also the house of disappointments our ill health disappoints us our enemies disappoints us because it is a sat because it is saturn a natural malefic it will give some form of break so the native although she was studying she had to leave her education and come back for good i see some people's hands raised Marin's hand is raised. Yes, Marin. Can we invite Marin Mavra, please? Did you have a question on this chart, Marin? Hello. Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Okay, because uh, we have here uh, the ninth. 
house of the father and also uh, there is the son which is significant for the father and we have the Lord which is Saturn in the eighth house of let's say disease and this is uh, uh, Saturn is also the Lord of the ninth the eighth house of death so it occurred to me that uh, something could have happened to the father regarding the illness or the, some chronic type of illness maybe which would lead to death or something like this. Uh, the father is still alive. The father is still alive. Yes, yeah. But... I see. This was just a thought. You know, it's a good thought, no doubt, because we get so many points in a chart. Uh, but what happens is, uh, at that time, whether the father suffered some ill health or not, we are not aware. At least I am not aware. You know? Okay. Yeah. Because, you know, when you ask people uh, uh, what happened in your 24th year, they might tell only two points or three points. Yes, yes, I see. You know, they might not tell all the points. You know? Of course. Uh, but you have a point. Eighth Lord in sixth house is a Viprit Rajyo. is a Viprit Rajyo and it can also show Viprit Rajyo is of two types the interpretation of it one is on somebody's downfall the native will rise that is one result the other result is whatever you were doing the reverse of it will happen Okay, I see. So the reverse of it, observe this on many charts regarding Viprit Rajyo when it got activated, similar things would happen. Sometimes the reverse of it would happen. Okay. Let us go. Okay, thank you. If there are no questions for this chart, then let us go to the next chart. Yuvraj, would you like to take the next chart? Sure, if you want me to. Here's the chart, all yours. Well, we can see uh, Jupiter, the 24th year will be from May 1996 to 1997 for the native born on May 11, 1973. Jupiter, as we can see, is sitting in the 8th house. So the 12th house from it will be the 7th house. Now seventh house is about relationships, either marital or the business partners. We see Rahu sitting over there, so something unconventional, maybe some sort of cheating should happen. The seventh lord goes to the eighth house and gets debilitated there. So the result is because Jupiter owns the seventh house itself, so relationships are the main thing we can see, we can foresee. Native got involved in an affair with a divorced woman. Rahu bringing in uh, that effect, something unconventional, more so in India. Now the seventh lord going to eighth house and the eighth lord going to twelfth house about pleasures with Venus along there. 
the picture becomes more clearer. I mean, when we look at this chart, the seventh lord is being debilitated. Rahu is sitting there, which, as per some uh, views, uh, gets debilitated in Sagittarius. If you take that, some people take that in Scorpio. So we can easily see if even if the relationship may have come, it couldn't have lasted for long uh, because of uh, the debilitation of the seventh lord as well as Rahu sitting there. Which obviously the native confirmed that this something unconventional happened in the, the relationship uh, matters. I guess uh, if there are no questions, we can move to the next chart. Now uh, we have a female native here, uh, born on July 22nd, 1989. So the 24th year will be from July 2012 to July 2013. We have uh, Jupiter in the first house, so the twelfth house becomes the twelfth house itself of loss, something related to foreign hospitals. The twelfth lord is sitting in third house with Ketu in the sign Leo. Obviously, Venus sitting in a Leo sign has a lot to say, uh, but that's for another, another class. But uh, it is getting conjunct Ketu. Second house, I mean, the twelfth house has Taurus sign, which is sign of family. Jupiter becomes the seventh lord and the tenth lord going to 12th house, 12th lot getting conjunct with Ketu. Jupiter also becomes uh, the depositor of Saturn sitting in 7th house which is the 8th lot and the 9th lot and retrograde too. So uh, the native got divorced, so a uh, loss of uh, relationship, loss of marriage which is also the 12th house. Uh, happened for the native in the third year, which is the 24th year. But on the other side, the native started uh, a business with a foreign person and it got, it flourished during that year because 12th house is a house of foreign and Jupiter also is uh, the 10th lord and the 7th lord of business. So both the events happened one was negative and the other one positive because uh, uh, house has both the positive and every house has both positive and negatives to give. You can see uh, Mandi sitting there. Uh, Mandi can be poisoning. So the business when it flourished became the poison for the marriage. So it was kind of connected. The native was introduced to the business partner by her spouse itself. Uh, and uh, things soared suddenly and everything went haywire. So that's what we have been told that uh, this conspired. So we, we, all the charts we have seen till now, we have seen some major significant events happening in the 24th year for all the natives. Now we have um, another chart with us. Uh, the person uh, was born on March the 30th, 1983, uh, Aries Lagna. Jupiter sitting in the 8th house. So the, and the 24th year runs from 
मार्च 2006 टू मार्च 2007 ट्वेल्थ हाउस फ्रॉम जुपिटर बिकम्स द सेवेंथ हाउस ऑफ रिलेशनशिप्स अगेन इट आल्सो आई मीन वी कैन आल्सो सी दैट सैटर्न इज सिटिंग देयर व्हिच इज टेंथ एंड इलेवेंथ लॉर्ड तो मे बी आल्सो रिलेटेड टू करियर मोर सो बिकॉज सेवेंथ हाउस इज टेंथ फ्रॉम टेंथ but the seventh house uh, is also being expected by the seventh lord as well as uh, the lagan lord mars now so many planets fourth lord 10th 11th lord lagan lord eighth lord second lord getting activated in that axis so some major event should have happened because so many planets are uh, being influenced the native uh, got uh, married in that year in the 24th year okay uh, native the rahu aspect is also happening on this 7th house jupiter sitting in 8th house 9th and 12th lord the native being uh, hindu entered into relationship with the uh, muslim girl uh now see we have uh, the saturn retrograde here some kind of reversal as well as uh, the rahu uh, aspect on the 7th house so something unconventional again something unorthodox especially in for the uh, indian society uh but retrograde saturn as reversal so i mean i because we know the native the relationship didn't last for that long after that uh but as i said that saturn was sitting there the native got a good job change also in this area so which was quite prosperous so besides having the relationship there was a gain of position for the native also so both uh the significations got activated in this idea one was when now we in the hindsight we see was a negative event and the other one was a positive event so uh any any if there are any questions uh, for all these three slides uh, you can raise them so that we can take let us go to the next chart okay now we uh, have another chart here uh, native was uh, born on november 24 1973 the 24 year is running from uh, november 1996 to november 1997 and jupiter is sitting in the Ninth house, so the twelfth house becomes the eighth house, where you have uh, Venus and Rahu sitting there, and of course the eighth lord is Jupiter, which is getting debilitated in the ninth house. Saturn is expecting from second house, which is the ninth and the tenth lord. It's retrograde. We should note that. Now Venus uh, is also sixth lord and Lagan lord. and also karaka for uh, a love or maybe marriage say it's sitting in the 8th house so some sort i mean it's a related house also related to sexual activities so venus and rahu sitting there so we get a hint maybe something related to a relationship or some scandal some sort of uh, happening may have happened there Jupiter is also the eighth lord going into the eighth house, the energy. So eighth house is uh, getting heavy. The energies of the eighth house because Jupiter is eighth lord. So let's see uh, 
what event happened during this year. So we, as we can see, formal breakup with this girlfriend in this period. So the relationship was on, uh, and uh, you have a Rahu sitting there. As I've already said, that some people take Rahu to be debilitated in Sagittarius. Some people take in Scorpio. Uh, Venus is uh, also a depositor of fifth lord of romance, Mercury, sitting in sixth house. And Venus is also love. And eighth house is obstacles, problems. So the formal breakup with the girlfriend in this period. That uh, the relationship was maybe uh, going on for some time. And the formal breakup happened, which was a setback to the negative. Eighth house is also the house of depression, downfall. Okay. Any karaka that goes over there once in the lifetime the native will experience depression related to that karaka or downfall related to that karaka or the lordship so here Venus has gone over there it is with Rahu a planet which causes depression it also causes addiction so all this has led to the breakup with the girlfriend and it was supposedly a significant event in the native's life we have finished more so because maybe yeah native remembers it for so long so it is a significant event correct so 1973 born so probably the native is around 42 age now we're talking about November 96 to 97 so it must be, must have been a very major relationship okay when we have finished with the charts if there are any questions please go ahead and ask them first we would like to answer questions relevant to the technique then if you have any questions relevant to the course, we will answer that. Could you invite one or two people, Yuvraj? Yes, sure, I'll do that. We have uh, Jen and Gabor. Hi. Hi, Jen. Hi, Jen. Hi. Um, well, I just wanted to clarify um, that the 12th house from where Jupiter is, that is the reason that it or the activator for what happens? Uh, could, you, could, you, the could you repeat your question, please? Well, is it always the 12th house from where Jupiter is that activates? The 24th, yeah. Uh, the 24th. Correct, year. correct. Okay. Correct. And it's not actually where Jupiter is? Uh, no, it is both. As we have mentioned in the first slide of the technique. Okay. The technique is where Jupiter sits it will activate the 24th year and also the 12th from itself it will activate in the 24th year but our observation over a few years over a few charts is mainly it activates in the 12th from itself okay. all right that helps thank you <clears throat> Gabor we also have Gabor. Hi, Gabor. Yeah. 
Namaste. Namaste, Gabor. How are you doing? I didn't have a recorder, but next time I will have. Uh, my question is, uh, what is the logical behind uh, this 24 year? And what's happened in, with the Jupiter in other uh, years? Yes. For example, 48. That, that's a good question, uh, Gabor. Uh, one is, when it comes to BS that is Brigu Saral Paddhati, uh, the logic has not been given to us so far and we have tried to find out the logic try to use many other systems on the BSPs and in some of the BSPs the logic fits some logic or the other fits but it is not consistent Mm -hmm. So, we have left the logic and we are only using the technique. We are ba basically, we are only trying to predict, not trying to find out the logic. Because okay. it, can, it can be a bit confusing in the future. Now, coming to the second part of your question, uh, 48th year, right now, Let's leave that as I told Jen. In total, this I'm answering to everybody. In total, in the first lot, there are 300 BSPs. 300 different BSP techniques. Today we have learned only one of them. So far, so far, what is known to me is 75 BSPs, around 78 you can say. We will be dealing with few BSPs in this course, some very important ones, some very good ones. What I have realized from my personal experience, it is better to master 5 BSPs become such a great master of it that when a client comes to me I should be able to say in your 27th year so and so event happened in your 12th year so and so event happened because your Saturn is sitting over here in the 66th year so and so event happened so we will go very slowly and I will try to answer questions on the level we are at right now. The same question if you ask after 6-7 sessions, I might be able to give a more broader answer or rather more uh, defined answer because if I answer it right now, it might lead to some confusion. To other students. Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome, Gabor. Yes, Srikanth, hi, how are you? Hi, I'm doing good, thanks. Uh, I have one question uh, is regarding, uh, let's say if there is a debilitated planet in the 6th or the 8th or the 12th house, right? That in itself is one of the radio gas, correct? So, sorry, uh, can you be more clear? The audio was not crystal clear. You know, in one of the charts, I found uh, that you know, the limited planets may not be always bad, right? Especially, they may be good also sometimes when they are in a good Correct. Right? So, in, in, in that sense, uh, if, 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 uh, like, you know, the, even if there is a limited Jupiter, but if it is in a good it can give good results also, right? Exactly. Exactly. And the other point I have for point I have. K. N. Rao, if you read K. N. Rao's books, he has mentioned in one of his books that he has found for Mithuna Lagna, Jupiter in the eighth house debilitated gives excellent results, and he found this in the charts of some uh, jewelers.
and the other point I have is uh, if the uh, 24th year could also be kind of a natal return for Jupiter, right? It could be. So, and uh, recently also there was one book from Spain where even 36 year uh, he connects with Jupiter's uh, natal return. So there will be something significant about this uh, 12 year cycle of Jupiter is what I am trying to infer yeah. even for the previous yeah, it is it is a Bribu Nandi Nadi cycle. Okay. This was also revealed in another book. Okay. It is basically a Bribu Nandi Nadi technique. Jupiter, one year, one house. Okay. But as you progress in BSPs, you will realize that that technique does not fit here. That logic does not fit with the BSPs. You know, we have a lot of time in 16 weeks. Okay, many BSPs will come of many different planets and you will realize that that logic does not fit here. I mean the best advice is not to look for logic in BSPs. If you go for that you will get confused. Yeah, because many people have tried, many people have tried and uh, you know I, I started revealing BSPs I think five years back or six years back I started revealing BSPs. Many of my students, they tried fitting in the logic, so did I try. And I realized that the Rishi is Rishi, we are only using our intelligence. The Rishi's intelligence or the Rishi's logic, we do not know. One more question, okay. sure. uh, I have seen uh, some of the articles from Sakta Rishi, right? They made uh, extensive use of Padas also. So, and there have been many controversies like like Kendra doesn't use exceptions in calculating the bar or the product, but uh, there are people who actually do, right? So, and that one and along with the I answer, do you have any specific uh, thought process like now what do you expect us to, as a learner, to start with what will be the right I answer to use and whether we should use uh, exceptions in the bar or the product? Okay, this is not related, your question is not related to the course, but I will still answer so that everybody is on the same page. In my limited experience, I have found Lahiri Ayanamsha to work exceedingly well. Exceedingly well. I have also dabbled with predicting what event will happen in a particular day. With Lahiri, with when you change the Ayanamsha, things change. Okay. I have found good results, consistent results, not 100% but consistent results with Lahiri Ayanamsha. I have worked extensively in the last 10 years on Sashti Amsha D60. With Lahiri Ayanamsha, if, if you change the Ayanamsha, your D60, your Sashti Ayanamsha, Sashti Amsha changes. Okay. So, so far I have found Lahiri Ayanamsha working well. Second part of your question was regarding Padas. Padas use exceptions as of now or use whatever you feel works for you. It is a huge debate. None of the current Gemini scholars have classically quoted any commentary of Gemini. They have not quoted Narsimha Suri. They have not quoted uh, uh, Venkateshwar Vyakya. They have not quoted Nilkant Vyakya, they have not quoted the shloka as to what different commentators of Germany in the ancient times what they were using and what was the logic. Each one is only trying to say my logic is correct. When we are studying a classical science like astrology, there are two ways to study it. One is the original way which is as per the Shastra we have to see the shloka, we have to quote the shloka whenever we are in any discussion or we are writing a book. Or the second way is to give just one's logic. The third way is that whatever you learnt out of your guru's mouth, your guru might not have given you shloka, but whatever you learned out of your guru's mouth, it is acceptable to you you practice it. The, when it comes to BSPs or Brigu system, there are no books, there are no shlokas, 
nothing is available very little has come out in the form of bhrigu nandi nadi and some other books so we are forced to go against the shastra by not quoting the sanskrit shloka earlier i had kept quiet for so many years because i am a hardcore traditionalist i did not remove bhrigu system because i did not have the shlokas then one fine day many people told me no you have to remove this out i removed this out and the bsps have come out now it has come out 6 years back any other questions we can no come for come for one you welcome shashi bhushan has a question can we bring shashi bhushan and then marry for shashi bhushan please give raj I don't know why I cannot uh, add Shashi Bhushan. Okay, no problem. Uh, he has I asked. Guess, uh, he is connected. Connected through phone, I guess. No problem. Uh, I will answer his question. Yeah. He has asked, "Can you recommend a good book on BSP? Any good source you can recommend?" Uh, with all humbleness, uh, Mr. Shashi Bhushan. the term bsp was coined by me out of my researches because so far whatever we knew about the bhrigu system was all very obscure it was not consolidated it was not systemized i systemized it to a certain extent i made it simpler so i called it bhrigu saral paddhati from whatever i have learned it from different sources so until i write a book on bsps i cannot recommend any other book because there is nowhere in any written material you will find all this bhrigu system especially the bsps so whatever we will be teaching in this course is not available anywhere in any written format i have taught it to few of my students they they only know it now uh, marin is asking a question is it possible by this technique more accurately point to the event one year is pretty long do you combine it with parashiri technique uh, shashi bhushan uh, i will answer that uh, articles later on okay now coming to marin's technique Uh, Shashi Bhushan also asked another question, but anyway, coming to uh, Marin's question, yes, it is possible to combine it with Parashari. In fact, if you notice, in the whole lecture of today, we have used only Parashari astrology. The more deeper knowledge of Parashari you have, the more you see that out of three, four planets which are coming into the play. which planet is stronger will give the event more concerning to his department so if saturn was stronger in that chart where saturn was in the 6th house being the 9th lord in the 6th house if saturn was stronger it will give more negative event so you can use methods like avasthas to check the strength shadbalas you have to use the traditional parashari methods and see which one is stronger as to your other part of the question ki one year is long i will answer it in two parts first part yes you can come to the month the month of the event mr yuvraj who uh, you see on the screen he has done great research on it further more extensive testing is happening on it on at least few charts he has shown consistently the month of the event then when it comes to the year let us try to understand how our rishis used to predict you can go on our website there is saptarishi nadi we have translated it the rishi used to predict majorly i used i repeat majorly would say 
in the 31st year the native will get married then he would use sun to time the month which month it will happen so sun when it comes in trine with the 7th house or the 7th lord you get the month that is a very broad technique please understand also that it's a broad technique it is not a 100% consistent technique some people use the sun to time on the rashi chart for the month of marriage some people use it in the normans chart right now when we are mastering a technique how i have been taught astrology and especially brigu astrology is you see to it that you use you make your prediction very difficult what do you mean by that you don't use many parts of what you see in the chart you use only two parts or three parts and then predict you make a habit of it you do that on 100 charts 200 charts you will realize your intuition is growing phenomenally we have done this with all our students they use bsps to predict in 3 seconds in 3 seconds flat because they had practice over 100 200 charts their intuition grew more phenomenally out of the 5 6 events possibilities that you see your intuition tells you this event only will happen it is an integral process of learning this system initially it will be tough especially to the scientific mind and educated lot like us but in the long run it will help you so i am giving you suggestion and advice based on couple of years of experience in only this method any other questions anybody has uh, does jason have a question he is in the panelist hi jason how are you he has muted himself oh okay uh, do you see any questions shashi bhushan i can send you the whole lot of techniques but right now uh answering your question i'm trying to answer your question right now let us master the first bsp that we have learned i think the session is over now i will give the general rules of what you have to do what is the homework if there are no for jason is saying jason is saying uh, sorry i don't have any mic with me no problem jason uh now i would request everybody to join the facebook group everybody has been invited if somebody has not been invited please let us know what will be done in the whole week everybody will have to work on minimum five charts you will have to create a word file put the chart put the explanations point wise explanations in as brief as possible as ma as brief as possible and submit it as your homework try to submit your homework by wednesday and our teachers and volunteers will check your homework we want everybody to grow together this is not a one way class everybody has to submit their homework it is double effort on our side to check each one's homework when we do uh, reach on submit it on facebook i'll tell you what is the advantage of facebook we are having a russian course simultaneously happening they are one and a half months ahead of us 
there are 79 people in that course. In this course only 20 people, 18 people are there. 79 people, let us take approximately 80 people. 80 people are testing each technique that they are taught every week on 5 charts. So what is happening? In total, they are submitting 5 into 80 charts with explanations. We are checking that homework. It is a laborious work for us. But because they are submitting it on Facebook, all the 80 people are reading the examples of everybody else. So nearly 300 charts people are checking. So they are getting practice over 300 charts. Some of the Russian students are very good. They are not sticking to 5 charts. They practice so hard that they do 10 charts. Some do 12 charts. So they submit 5 charts. Then again after few days they submit more charts. So the more they are practicing, the more they are perfecting. They are extremely hard working students. So we have formed that methodology. Facebook is extremely good for us. If somebody is not convenient with Facebook, they can submit it privately via email to Yuvraj. But my request is please be on Facebook. I will give step by step. Uh, uh, Helen has asked a question. How do you submit homework on Facebook? And is the Saptirishi Astrology Group private? Yes, it is private. Only the students who are there in this course are invited over there. Nobody else will come to know you are on Facebook. Yes, Mr. Shashi Bhushan, it has to be submitted on Word. You have to paste the chart on Word. Write your name at the top of the Word file. Homework submitted by so and so. Then you have to write chart number 1. You have to paste the word file, uh, the chart on the word file, then give the explanations, then go to chart number 2, then go to chart number 3 and so on. I will send you all a sample homework also. I will email you all. Yuvraj, could you email a sample homework to everybody concerned? Sure, I'll do that. Yeah. And then you can upload it on Facebook post. On as Facebook. a Facebook post. Yeah. You have the option. And how to post the charts, how to do that, we will give you instructions, clear cut instructions on the Facebook page also. Give us a day. Okay. If somebody can be helpful, if somebody knows how to create a video and how to post a word file on Facebook, it is very nice. You can simply click on add file and upload the word file. Okay. We work together. The more we are focused on the technique, only on the technique, the technique will start talking back to us. Please remember this. This is the biggest secret of astrology. When you pray to the Graha, the Graha talks back to you. Any other questions? My only request is simple. At the end of this course, you will learn nearly 20 techniques approximately, let us say that. Even if you become master of 7 techniques, when a client comes to you, within 5 minutes you have to use 7 techniques or say 10 minutes. In 10 minutes you tell a person, your Saturn is in the 6th house, so in the 66th year, you will have a disease or you will have an accident or some issue regarding health. The person will be impressed with you that within 10 seconds you have said 66th year so and so event can happen. Or even if you do not tell the event, you say 
66th year, 6,000 is getting activated. So we can anticipate 6,000 events like so-and-so, so-and-so, so-and-so. No technique in astrology gives you so fast a result. So your client gets happy that you know astrology and you can do it so fast. Because in India it is very simple. The modern Indian sits with a chart, looks at it for 15 minutes, 20 minutes, then starts predicting. But if you go in village India, or if you have learned astrology from the people I have learned, in 30 seconds of looking at a chart, you have to predict. If you cannot predict in 30 seconds, they tell you openly on the face, you do not know astrology. In the, I stay in Bombay, Mumbai it is called nowadays. In Mumbai, you have Maharashtrian astrologers. Maharashtrian astrologers are very, the older generation are very strict. If you ask them, please show me the Navamash of your horoscope, they will immediately tell you, it seems you do not know astrology. The point is simple. It is not as if Naumans, the Rishi has not said. It is how these people, the older generation, they made it this way that you have to master Rashi chart, master Rashi chart, then go deeper. This is what you have to do. So we will focus primarily on the Rashi chart. Probably in the fifth lecture, we will go on D60, that is Sashtyamsha. Now let us close for today. I think it is 4 o'clock in the morning here in Bombay. Thank you so much. Pranam to everybody. Shall we close?